there's a lot of reasons why we self host we self host because we want to take back our information we just want to self host open source tools or whatever you're looking for now when it comes to two-factor authentication it's no different to any other service so in this video i'm going to show you how you can self host to ETH auth using docker more specifically docker compose so the structure of this video, we're going to just, I'm just going to take you through the demo uh, that 2 if off have, and a link to the demo will be in the description as well. So you can go check that out. And then I'll just show you around how it works. And then I'm going to show you the documentation that I have for this. So that's also going to be in the description. Documentation will take you through all the steps that I have, uh, and it will provide you the Docker Compose file as well. So you can follow through with all of these steps here, or just follow along with the video, and you will be able to get it deployed for yourself as well. So this is 2 if off Now, as a pure web-based two-factor authentication service. So you might be familiar with tools like Authy or whatever that you use, and it's just an app on your phone. This is purely web-based. So it's not really an issue because now phones, now you can like make websites a app on your phone pretty much. So it just opens up. So you can just treat this almost like that. The good thing with this, you're not just restricted to an app on your phone. You can just open this up on your computer or wherever you are to get access to your authentication methods, right? So as you can see straight away, it's pretty similar to any other two-factor authentication that you've got. You've got your services, and then when you're going to go log in, let's say I'm about to go log into GitHub, you can just click your GitHub, and it'll give you your code straight away. You enter it in. And again, it doesn't matter if you're on your desktop, laptop, wherever you are, you can access your two-factor authentication services and just see everything in one single pane of glass, right? So if you're familiar with two-factor authentication, I don't think I need to dive any more deeper into this. You just could see all your services just like any other application. So let's cover the features of 2F off now. So straight away at the bottom, you can see new. So if we click new, what that's going to do is going to give us a few options to add a new authentication uh, to 2F off if we want. So one, we can use scan a QR code. So if we click this, now if we're on our computer, it's going to open up a webcam or whatever that you have on your machine. So on my MacBook, I've got the inbuilt webcam. If you're on a desktop and you don't have a webcam, obviously this won't work, uh, but there will be other methods. Now for this to work, your instance of 2f off actually has to be running on https okay otherwise the live qr code scanning will not work so just keep that in mind and i specifically call that out in the documentation as well there's a service that 2f off uses that requires https to work for that qr code scanning hence why if you want to use this feature you need to be running via https i have a few methods as well on how you can do that i'll explain that further when we actually get this deployed now again a few other uh, methods that we can go about you can upload the qr code so if you already have a qr code locally you can just actually just click and upload it so if i click upload a qr code it's just going to open up finder i can find that qr code and upload it here if i had one otherwise we can use the advanced form so if i click this this is like the manual approach so we can give it a name so i could say google put in an account name, but I can just put testing, whatever. And now if it could find an image, uh, you could do try my luck and it might be able to find an image. For whatever reason, it couldn't find one for Google, but if you wanted an image on that home screen for this, you could just upload one. Now let's say we're just gonna create a TOTP token. We could click here. And then when you're using a service and it gives you the MFA code, like the QR code, it will also give you a secret. So you can actually just paste that secret here if you didn't have the uh, way of using the QR code. So you, there's a whole bunch of other ways around rather than just using the QR code feature. And then you get some additional options here, but it's saying here that, it, look, if you don't know really what you're doing here, just leave them as default. Uh, but if you want, you can, you can change the digits, the algorithm, and the period, uh, but we can just leave that as default. So we just cancel around there and look at the last method. So the last one is import. So if you're already using an authentication app, so something like Authy, you can actually just export all of those. And then that will give you a type of file, like a tar file or something like that, that you can actually then just come into your 2F off, click import, and then it's going to go, cool, what have you got? If it's a QR code, you can scan it or upload it here. Or if it's giving you the text file, the JSON file, or whatever it is, you can click upload. And then all of your existing MFA services now can just be migrated to 2F off if you'd like to do that. So those are the ways that we can actually create new QR codes, well, new services within 2F off if we want them here. So that that's pretty much covers that. So the next step here is if we just jump into the settings, if we like, and there's a few things here. So again, we can change how we want the display layout if we want it a grid. So if we go back, you can see now it's a grid system. Otherwise we can just jump back to the list here. The theme, now I'm using, I normally use dark, but what happens is dark is actually quite dark on this. And especially when I'm making a video, 
For personal use, and if I'm not trying to explain it, dark could be good, and I'd probably use it, but let me show you. So this is dark. So uh, you can probably see, right, it's quite hard for you to actually read what this text says. I can see it clearly on my screen, but on a recording, uh, I'm looking at the preview, and it's quite dark. So I didn't want to take the risk that you couldn't see what I was talking about, hence why I'm using light mode. But you've got the feature, which is always nice. Again, you can change, you know, show icons, get official icons, password formatting, how you want it to be shown, change all of that. If you want to set up groups, you can do that. Uh, the security, which is always good, especially for your multi-factor authentication. If you leave it out, you want it to probably log out just in case someone comes to your machine and hello, here's all your tokens. You don't want them visible. So you can change this uh, here. So you can also actually change it. As soon as you copy a token, it's going to log you out. So let's actually see what that's like. So I'm going to choose that. We'll close, come to Facebook, say we grab that token, immediately logs us out. So we can also choose how it shows the password. So either we have to click on it or it will just show them on the home screen. So if I click this and hit close, you can see that all the codes are now visible straight away. We don't actually have to click into them. We can just see them straight away. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, that is something you can enable. And if I come back here, you can see you get additional features. So you can close it after uh, copy. Um, you can also copy on display. So I'm assuming as soon as you click it, it will just copy it into your in, into your clipboard. Uh, you can also replace the characters with just asterisks as well. So just to keep things a bit more secure, which is always nice. You can also uh, use a basic QR code reader. So if you experience issues with capturing QR codes, enable this option to switch to a more basic but more reliable QR code reader. So uh, yeah, again, if you're having issues, they're giving you a bit of a fallback option, which is always nice. And then you can also change your default mode. So like QR code live scan is generally uh, a good default option. But if you're not running over HTTPS or you just can't use that, again, you can actually change what your default method is. Just it's nice that they accommodate for stuff like that. You can check for new versions, always good. And then you can also enable single sign-on, uh, which is awesome. So if you've really got a external identity provider, something like Authentic or whatever, I've made a video on Authentic. So if you're keen on understanding how you can set up an identity provider, go check out that video. You can also disable registration. So by default, when you actually set up 2 Auth, and I'll show you this in a sec, uh, you can create as many users as you want. So this isn't just single user base. You can set up for your home or uh, your work or whatever. Uh, but after a point, you probably don't want a bunch of people just registering, especially if this is gonna be made public. So you can actually disable the registration just by clicking the text box. Now jumping over to account, you can see we uh, our first account on, the, on this demo page is an admin. We can change our passwords, set new passwords, delete our account, that sort of stuff. Here we can set up OAuth and our web auth if we wanted to. So if, again, if you're using those identity providers, here is how you can set all this up. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. Uh, you can just leave them as default. So that covers everything. So now what I'm going to do is, if this in interests you, I'm going to show you how you can set this up for yourself and also how you can actually make this public as well. So this is my TikToks doc. So this is my documentation web page that I create for any sort of video that I'm doing that will have all the files and information that you need. So if you come to here, a link will be in the description. Click the burger menu on the top left hand side. Click 2F off. And what you need is the compose file. Now, this compose file is quite big, but it's just because there's a lot, a lot of optional features. So I'm going to show you what, uh, what lines you actually need to change for to get this up and running. But there's a lot of optional, and it might look intimidating, but you can just leave them as default. There's only a few that you actually need to change. So if we look at the compose file here, you can see it. Um, I would zoom in a little bit, but I'm going to copy this so I can actually deploy this. But you can see here that we're using the two-factor authentication image. It's going to be called 2F auth and there is a local volume. Now, a thing to call out here is make this folder, this is a bind mount. So rather than actually having a Docker volume, this will be using a folder in a directory and it will mount it to your container. You want to make this folder first. I'm gonna do this, don't worry. I'm gonna take you through all of this. And if you let Docker make this, it will be owned by root and your container most likely won't be. It'll be owned by the user that created the container. And then what happens is that it, you get file permission issues because two if all folder is owned by root, your container isn't, and you just get issues. So you wanna make that folder first. Of course, you can change this port, uh, this port here, 8000 to a port that you would like. You can change the app name. So two if all, uh, change it to whatever you like. Leave this as local. Uh, if you want to enable debug, you can change this to true. Now, site owner, so this will be the email address, the login of your admin. So 
when you're going to set up your initial first user that you're going to uh, register, make this email match, uh, and that will be your admin user. And then we need to generate an app key. Now there's a few ways you can go about generating this key and, I, and I've given you a few methods here. So, you know, this is the original one from the documentation. So this Docker Compose file is straight from the official documentation. A link is here at the top of the page and that will take you to it. And they suggest this one here, but what I've said, hey, look, what you can do is just run this command here. So you just got to have PHP installed on your machine and then this will generate and spit out a 32 um, key, uh, base64 encoded key that you can use and then you can just paste that here. Again, I'm going to walk you through all this, so don't worry. App URL, so depending on how you're accessing this, if you are going to be running it locally, then it's, of course it's just going to be HTTP with the IP address and the port. Um, otherwise, if you're going to make it public with like an actual domain name, then that's, it would be HTTPS with just the domain name, right? Uh, and I'll be using a domain name for my example. And then you just need to make sure the asset URL matches the app URL. Again, there's so much information and notes in here that it explains all of this. And then from that point on, you can leave everything below this as default. But if you're interested, you can read through it all if you like, like setting up uh, your mail. So, uh, you know, you can send out emails for like password resets and stuff like that. You can set up all of this if you want. Uh, but I'm just going to leave that all default. But if you scroll down, I have more documentation. Uh, you know, explaining what is going on, you know, making sure that you're creating these folders. So yeah, everything I'm t I've just talked about is explained in, in this page as well. So that's enough information of actually just showing you 2F off and it just taking you through documentation. So let's get this deployed and then we should be good. Okay, so what I've done is we're on my server now, my Electron Cloud server, and I just set up like a general folder structure where inside I make a folder called Docker, Inside Docker, I have a folder for every single container that I have that contains, you know, it's any bind mounts and it's to compose file. If you want to follow that structure, you can. Just to give you an example, if I do ls, you can see I have a folder for all the machine, all the containers that are running on this machine. Now let's change back into 2FA and let's start getting this set up. So let's do an ls, it's clean, nothing in here. So first off, what we need to do, let's create that Docker compose file. Let's just do a nano docker compose.yaml. And let's jump to the documentation and grab that uh, Docker Compose. Right, so I've just pasted it in and now we can start to change this for how I need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this port to run on 8092 just because I know that's a free port on this machine. I'm going to leave the app name as 2F off, that's fine. Again, the app environment, change, leave it as local. Don't need to turn on debug, I'm going to leave that as false. Now for this site owner, I'm going to set it as the email address for that I'm going to use for my login. So I'm just going to do demo at techdocs.nz. Now here you can see I've just quickly added this, but I've made sure that it's in my documentation. We need to have actually the base 64 and a semicolon um, and then our key. If you you want to just make sure that this is here. Uh, again, if you use the compose file in my documentation, I've already made sure that's there. Now what we need to actually do is generate that key. So if I go back to my documentation, I'll just save this and I'll close out of it. We need to generate that key. So in the documentation, I have this command here. So I'm going to copy this, paste that in. So if you if you don't have PHP and you're running, you know, Linux, it's just going to tell you that you need to have PHP installed. So I'm just going to hit enter and this will spit out our key. So this whole key here, let's just copy that. Perfect. That's all we need. That's the key we need. If you have any issues or get stuck, Discord, uh, which is a, in the link in the description or YouTube comments, and I'll help you out. And go find that location for the key. And now we can paste in our key. There we go. So our key is in there now. So let's continue down. And now it's the app URL. So like I mentioned before, you can run this locally and you can run it via HTTP. But if you want to be able to use the QR code scanning, it needs to run via HTTPS. So I'm actually going to expose this via Cloudflare. So Cloudflare, I have a video on it. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but it allows me to easily expose my Docker container using a domain name. And I don't need a port forward or anything like that. It's just Awesome. So if you're keen on understanding how you can, you know, publish your container and it, it gets SSL certs and all of that stuff, you don't have to port forward, uh, check out the video. It'll be in the corner on how you can get started with Cloudflare. But that's how I'm going to be publishing this. So I, I'm just going to put in the domain name that I've already set up for this. So let's do 2fa.techdocs.nz. So this domain name, again, is already set up in Cloudflare. It already knows the IP address um, and, you know, the container that it's looking for on that port. So pretty much as soon as we stand up this container, uh, Cloudflare will be happy with us and we'll be able to access it over that domain name. Now we want to make sure that these match. So let's just copy that. Get rid of this. Paste that in. So our asset URL matches our app URL. Great. And uh, that's it. 
So we can actually save this now. So save and close. Again, there's a lot of stuff in there, but those are the only lines that you actually need to change to get a working environment. So just for pure clarification. So as you can see, this is my Cloudflare tunnel. So I have a public host name set up and it's looking at this IP address on my local machine. So this IP address here on port 8055, that is going to match what I have in my compose file. And that's just going to associate that domain name with the container that I have running locally. Well, just a local service doesn't even need to be a container, whatever's on that port, and I'll be able to access it. So it just it just makes things so easy. So if you're keen on using Cloudflare tunnels, again, go check out that video. So now we've got our compose file. One last thing to do. We need to make that folder. This one here, 2FA auth, right? Or whatever you decide to call it, we need to make sure we actually make this ourselves because if we don't and we let the, uh, we just run this and Docker makes it, it will be owned by root and we don't want that. So let's just do a make directory. Bam, perfect, it's in this location. So our container is going to use that now. So now if we do a Docker compose, up hyphen D, so it's gonna run detach mode and hit enter. Our container is now up and running. And we can just do a docker compose logs see what's going on awesome that looks good no errors or anything like that so now let's try hit that domain name that i've got via cloudflare and see if we can access our 2f auth so i can actually just click this here and see what happens and there we go we've hit the login screen here so of course we don't actually have a login yet so we just need to register one so if i click register and I apologize, it's uh, the dark thing. Right, so I've just put in my credentials here. So we're gonna use, again, that email address matches what I have in my compose file. So this account here will become the administrator. So let's hit register. And I'm saying here, you can enhance the security of your 2F auth account by enabling web auth and authentication. So when we log in, you know, it's going to ask us for an additional code. And if you if your computer supports this, you have an app that supports this, uh, then, you know, like if you're using a YubiKey or whatever, then you can't just log in with a password. There's an, that additional layer of login as well. I'm going to just go maybe later on this one. But I would really highly recommend that you actually register that. So let's click maybe later. And here we are. So now we can actually scan our QR code and get everything set up. And again, if I click scan QR code, it's going to open up my webcam on my laptop uh, and I'm going to show you. There you go. You can see me. Hello. Uh, the green screen behind me. I could <laughs> grab my QR code, scan it, and there you go. But no, you just see my face. And again, you've got all your alternative methods that you can now use. So if we, as you've seen here, if we actually sign out, we've, we've got this thing here where we can actually still register. So we, we don't really want that. So what we will do is I'll log back in. And then what I can do is I can go to settings, scroll down. And we'll disable that registration, right? So if I close that, and we'll sign back out again, you see no one can actually create any more accounts or anything like that. So it's just a good way to stop. You know, if, if it's public over the internet like this, people can't just log in. So that is 2F auth. That's, I've shown you all around it, all the features that you can use with it. It's a purely web-based two-factor authentication service that you can self-host. And yeah, so if this is something you're interested in, again, the documentation's there. Um, hopefully you can follow along with this video. If you have any questions, join the Discord. A invite link is in the description of this video. Ask in the YouTube comments. More than happy to help you out wherever you may get stuck. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about it, if you're going to use it, um, and how you go with installing it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. And if you made it this far in the video, please uh, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great one, everyone. See ya.